Hello, Lee from Art of Light Images and today I'll be discussing my predictions for the upcoming DJI Mavic 3 Pro and Mavic 3 Zoom right after this. Welcome back. So firstly, you might think I'm being a little bit presumptuous stating that we'll have a Mavic 3 Zoom as well as a Mavic 3 Pro. There's been a lot of talk online about the fact that DJI may just release a Mavic 3 Pro, but that makes absolutely no business sense. You've got a big company like DJI and are going to release one new Mavic series this year, well, in the professional range, excluding the potential for a Mavic Air 2, for example. Artel have released three drones including the flare model, the 8K, I can't believe this is the basic model, but the 8K basic model, and this one that has an half, half an inch sensor, and the 6K one inch censored um, more professional model. The Artel Evo 2 is quite a large drone as well, and it's faster than the original um, Artel Evo drone. So what are, DJ, what are DJI going to do to up their game? I don't think DJI are going to be able to get away with a small incremental update here. And I don't think matching Artel is any kind of... Matching Artel isn't going to work because that means that Artel will compete with them on equal, equal grounds. A large company like DJI has to do something special. So I think what we're going to see next is not going to be some small incremental upgrade. I think this is going to be a major upgrade. And it's going to be something of the like you haven't yet seen before with consumer level or prosumer level drones. I suspect that in terms of, and I'm going to cover the, the body first and then I'll move on to the cameras. I'm more interested in the cameras, but let's just talk generally about the, the body of the new Mavic 3 drone. I think it's going to be a unibody design like the Mavic 2 was. I don't think you're going to get to swap out the cameras because the cameras are going to be really quite different this time around. I suspect you might be able to send them off to DJI and they may just do the upgrade. Something they said they'd do before with the Mavic 2 series, but I don't think that actually happened. With regards to the actual sensors, we'll start with the sensors. Now I have the Mavic 2 zoom here. I don't think we're going to have a great deal of, of change in terms of how the sensors are positioned. Um, we're still going to have two sensors on the front. We're going to have two sensors on the back. We're going to have an infrared sensor on top two optical sensors and an infrared sensor underneath. And we're going to have sensors on the sides. I think for the Mavic 3, we're going to have two optical sensors on the side, not just one. And I suspect that those sensors are going to work outside of tripod mode and active track mode. I think they're going to be just as effective as the, the forward and rear sensors and are going to be on all the time. They're going to be on all the time because the drone's going to be more powerful. It's going to be a bigger drone. I suspect it could be up to 30% larger and most of that's going to be down to the fact that we're going to have a larger battery. To compete with Artel, DJI are going to have to have a similar drone in terms of flight time and speed. It's going to be a heavier drone, it's going to be a more dangerous drone, you don't want it to hit something, so the sensors have to be better. So I think that like the Skydio 2, we're going to have sensors which have lenses on them, wide angle lenses, not these pits like you see on the, uh, on the Mavic 3 and the Mavic um, 1 or Mavic Pro original. So it's going to be able to see a wider area and it's going to have some overlap with those, um, with those lenses because they're going to be wide angle lenses. It's going to have a more improved artificial intelligence system and it's going to have improved APAS. Active Track 3 is already something that DJI are using in, in their Ronin drones. I suspect we're going to have either um, Active Track 3 or an augmented version, Active Track 3.5 or Active Track 4. I wouldn't at all be surprised with a flagship consumer level drone or prosumer level drone, such as the Mavic 3, that we won't see anything um, probably less than Active Track 4, if I'm honest. In terms of speed, I suspect it's going to be a heavier drone. It's going to need more power to get through the air, of course. It's going to have larger props because it's going to be bigger. It's going to be quieter but it's going to be faster. Now currently the Mavic 2 series of drone, they're slightly under 45 miles per hour top speed. I don't think we're going to be going too far over 50 miles per hour, but 50 miles per hour is the speed I'm kind of thinking we're going to be hitting, or at the very least 48 miles per hour top speed. So we're going to have larger motors, 
more efficient motors, larger props, more likely than not, this drone is going to be a lot quieter, or at least audibly quieter than the Maverick 2 series of drones. I think in terms of body design and what we can expect with regards to speed and performance and so on, um, I think that's to some extent up in the air because these aren't the features, in my opinion, which make or break a drone. These aren't the features that sell a video centric or camera centric drone. What really sells is of course the camera. So I suspect, and I'm going to split this into two sort of segments here. I'm going to start with the pro version and then I'm going to move to the zoom version. I don't think we're going to be seeing a one inch sensor. I think one inch sensors are so 2016. And if DJI come out with a drone with a one inch sensor, what are they going to do? They're going to have it as an 8K drone. If they do, then they're virtually sort of competing with um, Artel on this one. They have a one inch sensor and it's a 6K drone. Um, it makes no sense. They need to basically give Artel a kick up the backside. They need to kick them down the field. And to do that, I think they're going to use a bigger sensor. I suspect we're going to see a micro four third size sensor. I think that we're going to have a usable ISO of 6,400, up to 12,800 expanded. We're going to have a dynamic range somewhere in the region of 14. We're going to have improved focusing technology. It's going to be a bigger sensor. So focusing is something you're going to have to have and it's going to have to be fairly accurate. So phase detect autofocus, not some kind of contrast based system. And it's going to be a very accurate phase detect autofocus system, similar to what you see in a mirrorless camera. This drone is going to work really well in low light. It's going to give a beautiful bokeh effect to targets which are really close to you. What you can focus on, you get a really background blur. I think that we're going to have a camera which is obviously larger than the camera with the one inch sensor. But of course, the drone is going to be larger. So it should be able to take the additional size. And because camera technology is even compared to 2018, the miniaturization of camera sensors now of camera technology of lenses and so on. It's fantastic how things are moving on. So I think it is well within DJI's ability to create a micro four thirds sensor size sensor in a camera. It will be a Hasselblad camera again in a drone, which is going to be about 30% bigger than what we currently see. That's my prediction. That's my general prediction for what we're going to get. I know a lot of you think it's going to be um, a one inch sensor, but no, it's going to be a micro four thirds. Just watch this space, micro four thirds. In addition to that, I have a suspicion, I might be wrong, but I have a suspicion that we might get a stacked sensor because of the rolling shutter problem. So the Mavic 2 Pro had issues with its aperture. So when you stopped down, when you went from say f2.8 to f5.6, there was a lot of diffraction, a lot of softness in the image, and a lot of people said it wasn't really usable. So I think DJI will fix this problem and you will be able to have sharper images as you stop down up the range. So I suspect you're going to be able to go from something like F2 to F6, maybe F7, and diffraction won't be an issue. I also suspect that we might have a stacked sensor. Stacked sensors have been used now for a few years. I think it will be a Hasselblad camera. Hasselblad are good innovators. I suspect that a stacked sensor makes more sense in a drone than it does in a lot of cameras because of the rolling shutter effect, especially with video. If you have a mechanical shutter in a drone as big as the Mavic 3, well, it's just gonna be bigger. The camera's gonna to need to be bigger. The drone might need to be bigger. So a stacked sensor makes a lot more sense. I know this sounds fanciful, but it just makes sense to me. Of course, this is gonna be an expensive drone. I won't even talk about the price because I haven't got a clue, but I think that a micro four thirds sensor, Hasselblad camera, ISO 6,400 usable, phase detect autofocus, stacked sensor, and a usable aperture up to f6, f7 is on the cards. Right, so with regards to resolution, I think that it's likely it's gonna be a, an 8K camera um, because it's gonna be the pro version. And somebody who can afford the pro version can probably afford a computer to be able to edit those images. It's gonna have H.264 and H.265 codec and it's going to be 10-bit, of course. That goes without saying, I think. With regards to the zoom 
camera on a Mavic 3 zoom, I expect we're going to be seeing a half inch sensor. It's going to be 24, 20, 24 megapixels. It's going to also be a 10 bit camera, H.264, H.265, just like the previous generation, an improved phase autofocus system. I think the zoom range is going to be pretty much the same. The main difference here is going to be we're going from a quarter inch sensor to a half inch sensor with more resolution and we're going from 8-bit to 10-bit. That's going to be the main feature. I think that with regards to, and I think they have to do this because they're enterprise series of drones. They ha they, they're currently using the Mavic 2 Zoom. They wanna gonna, they're going to want to update that. I suspect they're going to update it with the Mavic 3 Zoom and having a half inch sensor is going to really benefit with regards to um, at least doubling the low light performance. I think the dynamic range is going to be somewhere around the 13 mark for this camera. Um, and that's about it for the zoom camera. I don't think it's going to be anything more than that. The start of the show, obviously, it's going to be the Mavic 3 Pro with the, <laughs> with the micro four thirds sensor. And the Mavic 3 zoom is going to have the half inch sensor. I think that's pretty much where we're going with this. I think that the lens on the um, Mavic 3 Zoom as well, it's, it's going to be a sharp lens. It's going to do much of what it does now, but I still think that when you zoom in, it's going to continue to darken the image. It's going to be a variable aperture lens. It's not going to be um, an expensive... Imagine how large the lens would need to be so that you could have a fixed aperture as you zoom in on a target with a, a drone. The lens would have to be massive. It'd have to be something like huge, and that's just not going to happen, I don't think. And the technology really isn't quite there yet. But it is going to be a drone with, I suspect it's going to be a 6K drone. Why would you need an 8K drone when you can zoom in? You know, the whole point really of having a, an 8K drone is so that you can crop into the image, which takes a hell of a lot of computing power. Now, if you've got a 6K drone with a zoom, you're going to get closer to your target than an 8K drone with a fixed prime lens. Goes without saying. You just zoom into 48 millimeters with your 6K, and you're going to get more than you know, zooming in 100% with an 8K drone. The lens is going to be important. How good is the lens? How well can the lens deal with cropping in 100, 200% of an image? Are you going to see artifacts? Are you going to see chromatic aberrations in the lens? It's okay having an 8K drone, but the lens has to be of very high quality to deal with that level of resolution in video and to deal with that level of resolution when you're cropping in. So I think that it's going to save DJI money on having a 6K drone because the lens won't have to be as precise, um, but you're going to get more resolution out of the drone by zooming into 48 millimeters with the 6K um, employed, as opposed to having a 24 millimeter drone with 8K, you're not going to get in as, as close. Also, the zoom is going to give you more compression blur. It's going to give you more of that um, shifting background effect you get with optical zoom what you just don't get with a digital crop so i think the zoom is going to be more of an attractive um, drone compared to the evo to 8k it's going to be a 6k with a zoom a two times zoom in terms of the actual flight dynamics it's going to be very similar to the evo 2 but it's going to have more impressive obstacle avoidance so there you go that's what i think it's going to be coming out of the dji skunk works in the next couple of months to start saving now i know i am so don't forget to like subscribe comments hit the bell notification and until next time get out there and do something interesting goodbye